Well, hey, I am, I am so excited this morning. You guys are in for a treat. We have one of my, uh, my favorite people on the planet ministering to us today, Pastor Paul Goulet. He's been here before. He's, uh, he's with us again this morning. I'm so excited. Pastor Josh and Pastor Shannon send their love today. Uh, Pastor Josh is preaching on Maui, but Pastor Shannon, this is a really big deal. She's over at our West Side campus this morning. We, we have launched our Kapolei campus today. Come on, give it up. For what God's doing here in Kings, just like Pastor Milo said this morning, we are one church in 530-something locations around the world, and it's obviously a little hard to keep track, but it's awesome. God's doing amazing things, but man, I heard first service. It was incredible. God is going to touch you tonight. Would you get up, give it up for our guest this morning, Pastor Paul Goulet? <laughs> 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 Thanks, you guys. You may be seated. Hey, great. That was a phenomenal, I don't know if they call it a dance, but that was awesome. Shout out to the guys, because usually the ladies do that, but the guys are dancing here. Um, I was on whatever boulevard yesterday. I can never say either the proper uh, street names, but there was a big uh, what, Aloha Day yesterday, and uh, man, it's packed on that one street was shut down. And there was hula, then there was reggae, then there was rap. They had all these different bands and all these food trucks. Uh, but the food trucks were too long, so I could never eat the food there. Uh, they, I don't like waiting. <laughs> I'm impatient with that stuff. But there was some hula, and there's these guys up there with like loincloths right here and right here. No, seriously, they had nothing right here, and the wind started picking up. I started praying, oh, God, please, no more wind, please, no more wind. It was like, I was scared. I was really scared. <laughs> and then I was on the beach, and I saw a guy in a Speedo. Now, guys, I don't know about you, but I want surfer shorts or something like that, but please don't do the Speedos anymore. All right, that has nothing to do with my message. But I had to get it off my chest. <laughs> hey, we had a blast in the first service because uh, after they dismissed everybody, um, we just had a time of prayer. I love to pray for people. And uh, God gave me some gifts. I don't know why he gave them to me. He's got a great sense of humor, but words of wisdom, words of knowledge, prophecy. I know you just went through a prophetic conference. So we just stuck around. People were were dismissed and then they just hung around we prayed and God was giving words to people and it was just really significant so uh, that's what's going to happen this morning now I'm going to be back here Wednesday night I know Pastor Andrew said that thanks Pastor Andrew for mentioning I'm back here Wednesday night for part two of this message because I'm going to talk about mindsets mindsets came to me the other day uh, about a month ago I was in a doctor's office and I had a gentleman walk by he's a developer in town good friend of mine, and uh, doesn't go to church, and I, I just said, hey, how you doing? What's going on? So we sat down, we started chatting, and, and I, I said, listen, Brett, I, I had a thought that comes to my mind, because God, I never see angels, I, I, I don't hear voices, I don't see handwriting on the wall, I'm a normal person, um, that I get thoughts, because I think if you're normal like me, well, some people question whether I'm really normal, but okay, let's say normal and abnormal. So if you're like me, either normal or abnormal, you don't see all that kind of stuff. We're just, we walk by faith, not by, right. So I don't see that kind of stuff, but I get thoughts. And then I got to figure out whether it's the pizza for the night before, the banana I ate before I went to bed. I got to figure out, or is, is it God? Or is it me, my own imagination? So I said, Brett, I, 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 when you walk by, I had a thought. Can I share it? It might be right. It might be wrong. Let me know. And he goes, yeah, share it. And I go, um, in my mind, it came that you have a billionaire mindset. He goes, well, I'm not there yet, but I want that. Now, he probably only has $300 million to his name. He, poor guy. I feel bad for him. And, um, but he actually wants to be, have a billionaire mindset. And I started thinking about this concept of mindset. So I've spent the last month or so working on the concept. I hadn't preached it until I got to uh, Hawaii. And uh, I preached it yes, last Sunday in, in uh, Lahaina. But today's message ended up being different because I never can preach the same thing. So this is probably going to be different from the first message here. So who knows what God has in store? So Holy Spirit, help! <laughs> and I pray that they'll get what they need and you'll help me provide it. 
and transition it to them, and you also will deposit what your spirit wants to deposit here. And to those watching online as well, I declare this is a good day to change your mindsets, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen? Mindset sets are important, and I, I brought some material that I thought might help you as a follow-up. As I said, I'll be here Wednesday night, but uh, crossover. It's time to enter your promised land. Crossing over means that you've got the mindset that you are going towards a destination and it's called your promised land. It's not my land. It's not what I imagined. It's not my best. It's your best. So what I want you to start dreaming about is what are you going to cross over into? Now, if you're satisfied where you are, hallelujah, praise the Lord, stay there. But if you're like me, I want to go from glory to glory. I don't want to stop. I'm retired from the International Church of Las Vegas. I was their leader for 29 years. On June 26th uh, was my last Sunday preaching, um, and the, the city ended up giving me June 26th as my day. I now have a day named after me. So who makes that stuff up? Here's an old fighter, an old drunk, an old partier, and they name a city after, I mean, they, they name a day after me. So it was kind of a cool day. But you know, it's not the end. And I didn't know, people say, what are you going to do? I go, I don't know, I think I might just retire and just play golf or whatever. But it's been, what, five months now, and I'm so stinking bored. So when Dr. Morocco said, Paul, come here for a month, I said, just as long as you put me to work, I'll clean toilets, I'll rearrange chairs, I don't care, I just want to serve, amen? Because I'm going from glory to glory. Whatever my next chapter is, I want to serve. And so I uh, just finished all my doctoral courses. Now i got to write my thesis. I meet four doctors in October, October 3rd. I meet with four doctors to approve my thesis. And I'll have my doctorate, Lord willing, by May 23, this coming year. Someone say amen. Come on, you say, well, you're an old dog. I'm not that old. Oh, my mom, my mom was hilarious. She died at 100. But you say, why? Because she had a mindset. She had a young mindset. As old as she got... I remember she's 85. She says, honey, I don't know why you put me in this home with these old people. I said, mom, you're 89. <laughs> ah, I don't know why you put me here. I said, mom, it's because you can't walk. She said, but I'm believing God for a miracle. My mom had strokes. She was paralyzed. She's still believing God to the very end that she'd walk one day. And then one day I had a dream of her running in heaven. I just, see, this stuff does, you can't make this stuff up but you get a mindset of crossing over. I believe, that's why I brought this one, because I really felt like this is something we gotta get the mindset, I'm a crossover person. Say it with me, I'm a crossover person. And this tells you how to do it, and I'm crossing over. Some of you guys know that I was used a, a lot uh, in the political realm the last couple of years, and uh, a guy named Donald came to our church. Uh, I'm not into politics, by the way, so I'm not saying one party or another. Uh, I'm into policy. I wanna change policies. I wanna change the way we think. I'm salt and light. Someone say I'm salt and light. So, but this guy named Donald came to our church. I ended up being one of the first to pray for him and prophesy over him. He ended up becoming president. He came back twice because he just wanted to attend church and would attend church and prayed for him. I gave him this book and he stood and looked at it like this. And I said, Mr. President, you want to say something? And he goes, yeah. So he stayed longer. He was, all his t staff were upset. But the whole thing, people look at that stuff, they go, oh, you're this or that. No, 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 I'm called to Democrats, I'm called to Republicans, I'm called to Libertarians, I'm called to Communists, I'm called to Antifa, I'm called, anybody that has blood has been called by God. So I'm a game changer. Anywhere I go, I can change the game. So God uses us a lot. We change policies on prisoner reentry. We got hundreds of, I, I don't know, 100 million, 200 million towards prisoner reentry in our country. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? And then we've worked on fighting sex trade in our state, all behind the scenes. Because you don't judge by the pictures, you judge by what's going on behind the scenes. We are salt and light. We want to change policy. So we help get millions and millions to fight sex trade. I know you have no sex trade problems in, o in Oahu, so forget about that. But in Vegas, we do. Why? Because we're game changers. Someone say, I want to be a game changer. But that's a mindset. It's a mindset. It's how you see yourself in this world. Are you a victim of this world? Are you counting on a Republican or a Democrat to change your life? Are you counting on this or that? So, so, so after this whole process went through and he was no longer president, I said, Lord, I said, I, I'm kind of pigeonholed because people know me and they know what I did. And I went to the White House a bunch of times and all kinds of crazy things. And only God can do this stuff, right? 
And I said, God, send me to the Democrats. I said, make me a Daniel. And you know what? The people that love me the most right now are Democrats. We did a big event for veterans. We, we gave a million and a half dollars worth of product to 600 veterans. They were crying. One guy looked at me, he says, they, they spat on my face after Vietnam, but you gave me this. And he's, he's crying. He's a colonel. He looked at me, pointed my finger real close and said, I'll do anything for you. He meant it. You see, because I got a mindset that it doesn't matter what party you're from or what color your skin is. It doesn't matter what religion you're back from the past, that I'm here to be salt and light. Jesus said, you're the salt of the earth and the light of the world. He said, you are. Look at some say, you're the salt of the earth. You're the light of the world. You are. That's a game changer mentality. I don't care where you put me. I'm going to help change the environment. And so now I'm with the Democrats and, and uh, there's a, a, I'm in a Democratic state, so that helps uh, because I, I want to influence it for Christ. I want to influence it for God. And I want to bring, I want to bring improvement. So God gave us a million dollar grant for our organization and I, I wrote it and I got it. First one I tried for, second one I tried for, five million, I got it, uh, but for the glory of God. And, and we are now doing uh, fathers reintegrating with families. 52,000 dads in my community are not in their home. 52,000. So we have a program. They gave us a million dollars a year to help them, five million over all together. And we're, we're, we're the, one of the six successful programs in our country right now. In fact, the guy that I trained up and raised up and handed it off to, he's speaking at the national convention. Someone say, game changer! Because if you're like Paul, you say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I had a, a, some non-Christians hire me part-time for, to help with their foundation, and I said, well, I, I met with them. I said, I want to shoot for a $30 million contract grant for you. Not for me, for them. I'm unemployed right now. So, so I said, I want, I want to get you $30 million. They said, what? Yeah. I said, let's get some housing for veterans because veterans are living on the streets right now. Why don't we get housing for veterans and, and for other people that are, that are in duress and we'll build a big old complex. And they, they thought that's a good idea. So my friend got $30 million. I'm going for $30 million for them, not for me. Why? So we can help the veterans get off the streets. Someone say amen. You say, wow, are you crazy? Why, why can you do things like that? Because I have a miracle mindset. Miracle mindset. How do you want a kingdom mindset? See, it's not about me. It's about what God can do through me. Say with me. It's about what God can do through me. People say, I just want the government to change my life. They'll never change your life. They, they may mess up your life. <laughs> so I want to give you a scripture to start with just so now you understand the concept. And while we're going to Isaiah chapter 50, I want you to think about the fact that presets are part of our society. We have... Uh, we have pre-settings on our washing machine, don't we? And I found out you cannot wash uh, lights and darks together. I discovered that. It took me one or two times, and I discovered that everything is now kind of bland. All the colors are gone because I didn't put it on the proper setting. Then I realized that when you're drawing it, sometimes I'd have to dry things two or three times because I wasn't putting it on enough of preset for this load or that load, so I had to change my preset. Microwaves, I learned that you could push one button that says popcorn, and it pops your popcorn. One button, preset. Do you know you've got mindsets that are preset? And those mindsets will determine how you interpret life and how you, what type of decisions you make. It'll even determine how you feel about life. I didn't say this at the first service. You have to understand the word set in the Bible is used 597 times. And the word set means to establish. I'm not making this stuff up. The word mind is used over 84 times. Mind. The word thoughts is used, I think, 57 times. So the concept of changing your mind and setting your mind up is all the way through the Bible. So... That's why I'm going to continue Wednesday night because we're going to get super practical and I want to give you stuff. I'm spending a month studying this and, and preparing for a series. So um, this is all for you. Uh, Isaiah chapter 50 verse 4. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learn. What's that? That's a preset. The guy says, man, I'm learning. I'm not a dumb person. People sometimes say, I'm so dumb. I hate math. I had a grand, granddaughter say, I hate school. Then I said, you must love being dumb. Papa, you're mean. I said, I'm not mean. You, for some reason, have a preset idea that school is stupid. 
It's not stupid. It's what you get out of it. So I'm always working with my grandkids right now to preset their thinking and watch their words because their words determine the future. God spoke the world into creation. Jesus spoke to Lazarus. You understand, your words create destiny. If you're going to cross over, if you're going to be a change, a change agent or change game changer, you got to change your words. He says, I got the tongue of the learned. He's not some stupid guy. People say, I to, excuse me, because I teach university and stuff. They go, excuse me, professor, I have a dumb question. Stop right there. Who said it's dumb? Did I say it's dumb? Why are you telling me that your, your, your question is a dumb question? You just negated yourself. Don't do that to yourself. You're speaking death over your own life. I said, no question in this room is dumb. Period. Case closed. It says, I have a tongue of learn. He says that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who's weary. Now he's pre- predetermined himself to be compassionate for weary people. And he's going to have the right words. I just don't know what to say. Say something. I just don't know what to do. Do good. What does God require? That you act justly, that you walk humbly before your God. So word and season to him is weary. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as he's learned. Now, this is a big deal. People go, where do you get your book ideas? Where do you get ideas to get grants and stuff like that? Every morning when I pray. Because my prayers are not blah, 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 blah. I, I, I speak in tongues. I do. I make requests. I do. I praise him. I do. I sing songs. I do. But you know what I do a lot? I just write. Whatever comes to my mind. Do this, do that, call so-and-so. What about this idea? This message is a thought that I got in my early morning prayer times. It's, it's very easy for me to pray an hour or two because most of the time I'm not talking, I'm thinking. Why? Because God speaks to my brain. We want angels to appear. Trust me, you're not ready for an angel, and nor am I. I would have to buy a whole box of Depends just to handle one angel. <laughs> no, no, gang, quit asking for an angel to show up. You're not ready for it, nor am I. Just ask God to speak to my brain. Say with me, God, speak to my brain. Unfortunately, he has a hard time doing that because we don't ask him. Secondly, because we have mindsets that are very rigid. Why do you think when you go to the doctor, they give a family history? Obesity comes from your family. Anxiety comes from your family. Fear comes from your family. Poverty comes from your family. Almost everything, now you say, well, it's the devil. Well, of course, <laughs> the devil's in society to steal, kill, and destroy, right? But how do you think the devil works? He works through families. He works through relationships. The sins of the father go down how many generations? Four in other words, you might be living with a curse from three generations ago. A minds, and most of the time, it's a mindset. Romans chapter 12, be transformed by the renewing of your... It didn't say get delivered. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe in deliverance. But it doesn't say go get delivered. It says change your thinking. And when God gave me this word mindset, I had to study it. So let's go to the next slide, please, if you would. We're becoming game changers. We're in Isaiah chapter 50. The Lord has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, nor did I turn away. That's a mindset. He's not a rebellious person. I'm submitted to God. Verse 6, I gave my back to those who struck me. In other words, your associations, as Maxwell says, determines your... Thank you. Let's all try it on this side. Maybe they get this. Your associations determine your what? Thank you. I'll go to this middle section. <laughs> Your associations determine your destination. It's a classic Maxwell quote. In other words, show me your friends and show me what you read and I'll show you who you'll be in five years. Your associations determine your destination. In other words, I'm going to turn my back to those who struck me. One quote I say a lot recently is, I'm going to go where I'm celebrated, not tolerated. Man, if you're with an abusive husband or abusive boyfriend or abusive boss, why? Are you a masochist? Do you enjoy it? Is your mindset that you're an enabler, that somehow you have to put up with that? Help me, please help me understand how that's working for you. What I'm saying here, I'm here to mess up people's mindsets because for us to get out of it, we've got to confront it first. Y'all sit with me. Someone say miracle mindset. 
So look, look what it says here. I turn my back to them, my cheeks to those who plucked out my beard, which is a reference to Christ as well. I do not hide my face from shame and spitting. For the Lord God will help me. Say it with me. The Lord God will help me. It's a preset mindset. God's going to help me. Therefore, I will not be disgraced. Why do people not change? Because they're more comfortable being the same. You want to change your destination? You change your relationships, and you change your thinking. It says here, therefore, I will not be disgraced. Say it with me. I won't be disgraced. You got to try new things. You, you got to try to join one of the Bible studies at the church here. You got to people join the church. That's a big deal. Therefore, I've set my face like flint, and I know that I will not be ashamed. In other words, I fix my destination. I'm changing my mindset. I'm going to try new things, form new relationships. I'm going to set my face like flint, and I'm going to achieve my goals and my dreams and visions that I have for my eyes. Somebody say amen. amen. Look at someone say, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. You're going to do it. Say that right there. Look at someone say, oh, you're much better looking than you think. Come on, tell them right now, you're much better looking than you think. Mindsets are preset, like the dishwasher. What's your mindset? Well, how about work? You know, some people don't have a mind to work. I've, I, in Vegas, I had 105 employees. I had European employees. But some just don't like working. But it's, you know, a hard worker is actually a mindset. In, in Nehemiah, it says they had a mind to work. How about your body? You know, some people go, I hate my body. My, I got a big bottom or I got my small bottom or I'm too skinny or I'm too fat or whatever. And what people often do is their words determine the rest of their day. Ladies, have you ever looked at yourself and said, I'm just so fat. I just hate my hips. I hate my breasts. I hate my face. I hate this and that. You, come on now. You, you know what I'm saying is true. Why? You're declaring some preset rejection in your life. How do you think you feel? Your brain hears what you're saying. I'm fat, I'm ugly, I'm, I'll never amount to anything. You have preset sentences that cripple you in where you are now. So ladies, next time you look at yourself, look at the mirror and go, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Let's practice. Ladies, I want, come on, I want all the ladies to stand up. All the single, no, all the ladies, single and married. Come on ladies, let's all stand. Let's all, we'll, we'll practice a little bit. We're preset things. We're gonna, pre, we're gonna rewire our brains right now. I want all the ladies, and I want the hand to go up like this. Okay, come on now. Come on now, girls. Everybody, you're out online. Come on, stand up online. If you're crippled, stand up in Jesus' name. Ah, ah. <laughs> all right, ladies, go. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm so beautiful. I'm so sexy. I'm so wow. Now, how do you, you, why are you smiling like that? I have applause. I said, did you know your words just released endorphins in your brain and your brain is happy now? Now, look at someone, ladies, look at another lady say, you're so beautiful. You're so, I love your dress. I love your, I love your, I love your lay. I love your hair. Come on, look at ladies. Come on, tell each other that. Uh-oh, there's laughter. There's smiling. Why? We're reprogramming, re reprogramming our brain. I want all the guys, ladies, please sit, sit, sit down. Okay, all the men, stand up. All the men. If you're in transition, just join this group. <laughs> okay, all the men, I want you to go, man, I'm a man. I'm, a man. I'm gonna try new things. I'm gonna be confident. <coughs> and I'm gonna find my six pack somewhere there. Come on, man. Say it with me, I'm a hunter. I'm a warrior. I'm confident. Ah! Look at the guys. Are sm okay, look at each other and say, you're a warrior. You're a man of God. You're a child of God. You're amazing. You're buffed. <laughs> are you all still with me? You may be seated. So I want you to check out this. this you've got the scriptures, right? We, we know that we've got a problem with our mindsets because our words betray us. 
Our feelings betray us. If you're feeling depressed and negative, you got a bad mindset somewhere. I don't know where the wire's disconnected. I don't know what's going on, but somewhere there's a lie in there, and it's toxic, and it's killing you. When I looked at Lieutenant Colonel today, I said, are you a colonel yet? He says, it's at Congress. Because he, I, when I looked at him the first time, I saw eagles. He was right there on the front row. I saw eagles, and I knew that he was going to be a colonel one day. Just because God shows me pictures of people and their future and who they really are. But what happens is our mindsets sabotage us. We think we're not beautiful. We think we're not smart. My granddaughter, Hope, the other day says, Papa, I'm not good at math. I said, no, baby, you are good at math. I said, genetically, you receive the gift of math. I said, Papa's good at math. My father was the CEO of a company, president of a company. My great-grandfather, my grandfather was uh, an economist, and my great-grandfather was the auditor of Canada, financial auditor. Guess what? We got, we, got, we got finances in our background. I said, no hope. Right now, you may not understand it, but you're going to become really good at math because it's in your genes. It's in your heritage. What am I doing? I'm reprogramming her brain. Maybe one teacher says she's not good at math and she believes it now. No, no, no. It's time to reprogram those brains. And you got to reprogram your own brain. Next time you say, I can't do it, uh uh-uh, you can do it. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Anybody with me? How about my abilities? How do you, what's your mindset about your abilities? The Bible says, everything I set my hand to will prosper. What do you think about God? I'll give you a good one. God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. He's not mad at you. He's not, he's not going to get back at you. He loves you. How about my failures? The Bible says he's put my failures and sins in the sea of forgetfulness to remember no more. I'll tell you what, these what? Mindsets. See, what happens is I memorize verses. Why? Because they become triggers to get me back on the right track. I know the world and media and everything else is going to skew me off to fear or whatever else, but I've got to get back to my destination, which is blessings and and the promised land. That means I need things to trigger me to remind me to come back. When my daughter had cancer, I had to be triggered. Scripture was all things work together for good, even bad things. So cancer was not good. It was not a punishment. And I realized that somehow God was going to work it for the good. Not only did she get supernaturally healed, they weren't sure she'd ever have children. She has four children. And I got a picture. I don't know where the pictures went, but I got a picture. If you could show the picture of my grandson, Van Ethan, and this kind of hit it home for you before we start. I hand this back to Pastor Andrew for a second, and then I get to pray for you at the end. But uh, one of the greatest examples of mindsets is my, my is that broken, guys? It is, it is broken. If you can retrieve it, it'd be great. I was going to show you a picture of Van Ethan. Uh, Van Ethan, his name is Van Ethan Paul. And so we've been talking a lot about what he wants to do in his life. He had a mindset. His destination is to play pro soccer. So that means you got to combine your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions to meet your destination, right? We GPS it, and then we follow the directions, right? So I said, okay, I, I agree with you. You want to play pro soccer? Then let's believe God for that. And we prayed for it, and he trained for it like crazy. And um, our dream was, and I said, my dream for you is that you go to Europe one day and you sign with the European teams, which is the best soccer in the world. I know Brazilians might argue with me. I think Europe is the best place, the best place to play pro. Most money, the most impact. Um, And so we both determined to agree on that. Is that what you want, Van? Yeah, that's what I want, Papa. And so we started determining that. And so he determined that on the way to that destination, one of the stops was an academy. So at 13, he just got signed by Real. (laughs) 13. To go to an academy, all expenses paid, and play every single day at the highest level in the U.S. At 13, he signed a pro contract. That's not his final destination, because the final destination is to play pro. But on the way there, you have to have minor goals or or uh, 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 stepping stone goals. And so he got that. And I said, now, I, I, I think he needs to be in Europe because he's that good. I, of course, I'm his grandfather. I'm a little biased. But I think he's that good. So I said, the best soccer is in Europe. I said, Van, I, I, it's great, but I want you to go to Europe. Well, guess what? Within two weeks of signing with the team, they go, they put him up to the highest team, and he ends up going to Europe. Okay, now, if we ever get that picture back, um, and they're working on it, the picture is of him scoring 
They put him in, in the higher team. He's the only 13-year-old to play pro with, that, with the pro organization. They put him up with the team. Second game in Germany. Score is tied 1-1, and they put my grandson, Van Ethan, Paul, in there. They put him in, and the picture that you're going to see is of him scoring a, a header against the Germans, who are some of the best players. I got goosebumps thinking about it. <laughs> Only God can do this. When we fix, we look at our destination. We fix a new mindset. We're going to get there. We're going to have a good life, a happy life, a prosperous life, an impactful life. We set the goal. We change our mindset. Our feelings follow. Our behaviors follow. He scored the game-winning goal against Germany as a 13-year-old playing with this team. I'm going, only God and us. See, he, God wants to do miracles for you, but he wants to be a partner with you. He doesn't want to just, oh, God, I need to get lucky. I want to go to Casino Las Vegas and get lucky. I tell people, no, no, you're not going to get lucky. You're going to give your money away. That's how these buildings were built. These fountains were built by losers. <laughs> you want to be a loser? You want to get lucky? But there, that's the goal. That's my little boy. Come on, someone give God a big hand clap. You remember his mama had cancer. They were saying bad things about my daughter. Bad diagnosis. And I'm sitting there one day just bawling, holding her hands, massaging her. I had to shave her head in the bathtub. I've told you this before. And the scripture God gave me, all things work together for good for those who love God. It wasn't good, but God works them for good. I got a mindset that triggers me back to my purpose and my destiny. No matter bad, how bad things are going in your life, you got this mindset, no, that's not my God. My God is gonna do this for me. He's gonna change things around. He's gonna transform my life. My circumstances may stink, but I don't stink. God's gonna change my life. He's gonna move in my life. I don't care what you've gone against because I've gone against some too, but I'll promise you, I promise you, if you get a warrior mindset, that's one of the things I love the island. I turned to Dennis, who's my friend here. He's got a nice big truck. He's a big guy. I said, man, you're a warrior. That's in your genes. That's in your heritage on these islands. You know you're kind, you're wonderful, you got the gift of hospitality, but men, you're warriors. I'm telling you right now, we got to get a hold of that spirit of God, not the spirit of that rock or something, but the spirit of Jesus Christ, who's going to make us a warrior that we've been called to be. We're going to start the best businesses. We're going to start the best schools. We're going to start the best churches. Somebody say amen to that. Man, I want to break my watch. One last thing before we go. Right now, psychologists and non, uh, are talking about the growth mindset and the fixed mindset. I'll be talking more about that Wednesday night. So right now, in psychology and education, they're talking about two primary mindsets, the growth mindset and a fixed mindset. A fixed mindset is limited. I can't do it. I don't want to change. I don't want to risk. I don't want to fail. I don't want to get hurt again. But the growth mindset is taking chances, making logistic moves, to, 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 to spread, spread our wings and, and, and be at a different level that we've ever been before. It's, it's, it's living a life. I'm not afraid of dying, friends. I'm afraid of not living. I want to make sure that I'm not living in disgrace. I want to make sure that I'm taking steps for God that makes him proud. He goes, this is my son whom I'm well pleased. Guys, I want to just challenge you right now. Let's change our mindsets and we can start today. Now, before I close in prayer over you guys, and, and Pastor's going to dismiss you because of time, and, and I, he's going to receive an offering, which is great because I'm unemployed right now. <laughs> I really am. I walked away from everything, everything, every, well, absolutely everything, and I just trust in God because I thought, I'm healthy now. God healed my brain. I'm going to tell you that story. I didn't tell the first service, but I, I got to tell you that, and, and I'm going to take three minutes and four minutes, and I'm going to pray for you at the end, but, but I'm just going to tell you something. Something is about crazy is about to happen in this place. I told you I don't see angels, but I closed my eyes during worship. I saw an angel in the back right there. I'm thinking an angel came to church today. He came because of you guys. He came because there's something that God wants to do in your life. And I think it's going to be really major because if you change your mindset, you change your life. Pastor Andrew.
Wow. Man, if you grab a hold of that, that'll change your life. Whoa. Pastor Paul's going to come back up in a, in a minute here. He's going to pray for you. But before, we, before he does that, I want to give you an opportunity to, to sow into the man of God. But you know what? Not just into the man of God. And I, I love what Pastor Josh says about this. Is a lot of times when you, when you give in an offering, you're not, you're not just giving towards a preacher. You're giving towards the word. And it's a step of faith. And you're saying, I believe that. I'm grabbing a hold of that. And if God moves it upon your heart, I want to I, I encourage you just to do this. Just ask the Lord. Say, Lord, you, what would you have me do this morning? What would you have me give? And then as you sow, sow in faith. Say, God, I'm, I'm believing you, God, that I'm grabbing a hold of this teaching. I'm grabbing a hold of this principle. Amen. This is going to change my life. It's a step of faith. That's how, that's how God works. It's not, it's not about the money. All right, hear me. It's not about the money. It's about the faith. Amen. Allow the Lord, allow the Lord to speak to you. If you want to give this morning, go ahead and lift up your hand. And our incredible ushers are going up and down the aisles. You can, take, you can use an envelope. You can also give online, kingcentral.net. Lots of different ways to, lots of different ways to give. I want to encourage you as the ushers are going up and down the aisles. Don't miss tonight. Pastor Shannon will be bringing a powerful word from the Lord that God gave her some time ago, but she's, she's ready to release it tonight. So don't miss tonight. Pastor Shannon will be here. And uh, this Wednesday night, Pastor Paul will be back with part two of this message. So invite somebody. Invite someone to come with you on Wednesday night. Let me pray for you. Jesus, I thank you for your people. Lord, I thank you that these are hungry people. Lord God, these are people that believe they have a destiny in you. These are people that are are willing and ready to have their minds renewed, have their mindsets changed so they can do bigger and greater things for you, so they can be used by you in a greater way, so they can love more, so that they can serve more, God, so that they can give more, Lord God, so that they can be used by you to touch a lost and dying world. Lord, I pray that you would touch your people. God, even as your people are giving in faith this morning, Lord, I pray that you would anoint their gift anoint this offering and God we pray for Pastor Paul God I pray that in this season you would bless him God that you'd speak to him you'd lead him Lord God and the visions and the dreams and the call that you put upon him would rise even to a new level in this next season in his life we thank you Lord for what you're releasing we thank you Lord for what you're doing in Jesus name bless the gift bless the giver in the name of Jesus and all God's people said amen Amen. come on let's give together and I will Here's what we're going to do this morning. Pastor Paul's going to come up and pray. But I want to go ahead and uh, officially dismiss the service. I know many of you have places you need to be. We want to make sure that here at Kings that we respect your time. So we're going to pray. We're going to pray a closing prayer. The service is dismissed. But we're going to, we're going to continue and we're going to have a, an altar moment this morning. And if you want to stay and get touched by the Lord, I want to encourage you to do that. But let me pray a prayer blessing over you this morning. Lord, I thank you for your people today. Lord, I thank you, God, that faith has been released. I thank you, Lord, that there's dunamis power that's been released this morning. And Lord, I pray that as your people grab a hold of this word and they go to their families, they go to their schools, they go to their businesses. God, they go to their places of influence. God, that you're going to use them mightily. And I thank you, Lord. Bless them. Bless their families. Bless them financially. Bless them in every way. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. God bless you guys so much. Pastor. Now listen, if you need to go, you can go. But I want to spend the next three, four, five minutes just praying for you. And sometimes 
God gives me a gift of prophecy. Sometimes it's words of knowledge, words of wisdom. But for the whole group, if, if you're saying, man, I, I want to solidify this message. I'm willing to make a step right now. Would you step out and just come and join me? And, and it's not to be embarrassed. We're not going to put you on Facebook or anything. You're online right now. You can just stand up right there or kneel wherever you are watching. But, but, but. You know, I'm just declaring right now, I'm de I got a mindset, uh, I love altars. I love when people take one step towards God, God runs to them like Acts, like Luke chapter 15. You see, the beautiful thing is maybe you're even far from God, you wanna run up and get close to God, come on up here. Maybe you're still struggling with drugs and alcohol. Come on up, man, I was there. Come on up, man, it's not a big deal. I love you, God loves you. Or maybe you're at the height right now and you go, is there more, is there more? I see in my spirit someone going through the pains of divorce. I can relate. Just come on up here right now. We'll pray for you. I see someone just dealing with like a family members, kids that are, are just struggling with, with not walking with God. You feel guilty. Somehow you messed up. Man, I want to tell you what. The devil hates your kids. Don't blame yourself. The world hates your kids. If you would say, man, I'm feeling a burden for my kids. I need a new mindset. Come on up here right now. If you're just believing that you're looking for the right career that will really help you prosper and change, I want you to come up right now because we're going to make a few declarations and we're going to get some new mindsets, triggers that can get us back on the right track. In times when things aren't going our way, what do we do when things are going bad? We do the right thing. We do good. And so these triggers are there because God wants to remind us of who we are and where we're going. I want you to keep playing that beautiful song. That's a really good, good deal. There's a presence of God right there. Come on, just as you're at this altar, just lift up your hands and worship him. Can we sing it one more time? Then I'm going to pray. I feel the presence of God in this room. Yeah, just keep that music going. I like, I'm like, I'm a guy that likes to ride the wave. I'm not a real surfer. I want to learn, but I can surf the wave of the spirit. And he's in this room right now. I'm just, I'm feeling all extending out to the internet online. Someone's watching online. You feel something entered your room. That's the Holy Spirit. He's my friend. That's the only reason I can do what I do because my best friend is the Holy Spirit. And he's in this room right now. And, and, and Lieutenant Colonel, Kevin, I, I know the one time I saw eagles this morning, I was in prayer, and I, I saw Kevin, I prayed for Kevin, and I saw these swords, they were like this, or knives, I couldn't tell, but it looks like there were two of them that were like this, or like, I can't remember, but they were like knives, or swords, and I don't know what that means, you probably do, but I just declared, oh, you're going to the next level, warrior God, you're going to the next level, man of God, this is just, a, as they say in French, your being a colonel is a fait accompli, because God has great things for you, sir, he has great things for your wife, sir, and I'm just declaring it right now. But I see someone on the other spectrum. Man, finances have just been a curse for you. You've not been prosperous. I'm saying it's got to be cut today. It's from an old river, a generational river, a generational mindset that's kept you poor. What I want to do right now, maybe you've been through the pains of divorce. Maybe you've been through the trauma. I don't know what you've been through, but we got to cut the line right now with the river called the blood of Christ. So I want you to picture that it's right there, that old river, the trauma, your past, all the negative words, the abuse that you experienced. We're going to just cancel it. Come on. We're going to cancel it. Right now, we're going to cancel it. It could be addictions. I don't know what it is. I just know that we got the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. And he can cancel our past to guarantee a new mindset destiny. If you're with me, say, I'm going to cancel my past. All the negative of my past, we cancel in the name of Jesus. Ready? I want you to take your hand right now. Reach out to heaven and grab the blood of Christ and say, I cancel it right now. It's canceled by the blood of Jesus Christ. The, the negativity, the, the destructive, the 
the limits that aren't from God. I'm breaking them right now by the blood of Jesus. Come on, take your hand. Just going to wipe it all over your past. That old ex-husband that was abusive. That daddy that abused you. I don't know what the story is or mama. I'm just declaring. I'm, I'm canceling it. Come on. It had power over you. It still does. But it, you're breaking that mindset by the blood of Christ. The Bible says you'll put it in the sea of forgetfulness. That's what he does with our sins and our mistakes. And theirs too. Cancels it in the blood. Now, let's look over here on the right side. Are you with me? This is your new future. I want you to begin to declare it right now. Say, I'm a child of God right now. I'm a child of God. I got a great destiny. Say, I got a great destiny. There's no limit to what I can do with Christ. And God is for me. He's not against me. I'm going to be salt and light. I'm going to make a difference. Because I'm forgiven. And I'm being transformed. My words will declare my future. Not my past. Today, I break the power of the past. And I claim the future and a new destination by God. Now, let's stretch out your hand to the right and say, I de- right, right, I'm sorry, to my, your left, my right. Just say, I declare my future right now in Jesus' name. I declare a good future. I declare a good future. I see someone that's been divorced. You're going to have the relationship you always dreamed about. God loves you. God loves you, lady. He's got something good for you. But you seize it right now in prayer. I, I just see that, 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 that lady that you're a teacher right now, and you, you're having trouble in that classroom. It's just not going the way you thought. But come on, go ahead and grab your future. I'm going to have a good future. I'm going to influence my school or another school. I'm going to go where I'm celebrated, not tolerated. Come on, just declare it right now. Just reach out. I see that business person. I just see a business person. I literally see someone owning like trucks or, or heavy equipment. Come on, there's got a new one coming and a new one coming and a new one. I see also a van. I don't know if you clean carpets, industrial or whatever. I see another van coming right right. Just coming to reach out and claim it right now. Reach out and I see someone with a food truck. I see just claim it right now. Say, I that's that's what I wanted. How do you know? Because I'm seeing things in my spirit. Come on, grab it with your right. Say, in the name of Jesus, I pull that down from heaven. I pull it down from heaven for my life. For my life. Boy, I see some parents that are worried about their kids. Come on, that's the past, right? It's your past. Cancel it. Let's grab your future. Say, my sons are going to be doctors and they're going to be uh, social workers and going to be teachers. Teachers and, and nurses, they're gonna be they're gonna be world changers. Come on, let's grab the destiny for our kids. I'm calling it down right now for my kids. I'm calling it. We have some grandparents here like me. I call it down for my grandkids right now. I called it down for my my grandson. I called it down. And he worked it, worked it, worked it, worked it. So the name of we're gonna sing it one more time, and then either I'm gonna close or I'm gonna send out a few words, but I'm gonna do this. Can we sing it all one more time with all of our hearts? I will feel last thing we do is this we ask the Holy Spirit to fill us and help us the Bible sees our comforter he's our counselor so can you stretch out your hands before we go and say Holy Spirit can, you, can we bring that up just a little bit more keep playing don't stop I love to ride that wave he's here right now more 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 where's that drummer are you still there the guitarist come on just join me right now they're going to hear me. Don't worry about it. I f- I'm going to ride this wave just for another minute. There it is. There it is. Now stretch out your hands and say, Holy Spirit, come fill me. Empower me to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. God, help me change my mindsets. Hey, hey, help me change. Oh, just kind of rocked me there. Help me change my mindsets. My life will change, and I'm presetting it right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. My goodness, 
my goodness my goodness my could you feel his presence just you're making a mind transformation there I want you to do this. Guys, if you're with a friend, grab your friend and start praying. If you're with a husband or wife, start praying. Grab them and start praying. Say, God, I'm declaring. They're going to live their destiny, a new destination with new mindsets. Oh, come on. Come on. Pray for somebody. Husbands, pray for wives. Wives, pray for husbands. Mama prays for sons. Sons, pray for mama. Come on, pray. If you don't have somebody, find somebody, a friend of yours. Come on. Just pray for them right now. Pray. 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 Wow. There it is. You got it. Give them new mindsets, revelations, words of knowledge, words of prophecy, discerning of spirits, faith. Oh, oh, yo, 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 go, 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 go. I love you. I'll see you Wednesday.